the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Our online family, make sure you are praying. I want you to sing for me that song again. The first song you started, very powerful, powerful song. We'll pray in the spirit while they sing. Wherever I stop you, you just stop and then you go back. Very powerful song. There is only one name that is exalted. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Let your soul hear and know that there is only one who has been exalted made Lord and Christ, Jesus crucified. There are
please keep standing Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44 Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44 very powerful scripture and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever and it shall stand forever listen we belong to a kingdom that is invincible the one who died for us is not only a savior he is king the monarch not only of this universe the monarch he sits alone without any threat whatsoever there are kings that need people to watch their back just in case there is conspiracy lucifer tried it and there was war in heaven and the bible says michael the archangel that he judged him and there was no place found for him satan that old serpent he sits over the circumference of time and manipulates everything according to his will the Bible says Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please him the protocol is that he that cometh unto God you must come believing that he exists you are not you are not coming before a politician you're not coming before a consular of a, a, an embassy to give you a visa. You are coming before not only your savior, but the monarch of the universe. When he says, done, believe me, it is done. <laughs> Kings are not talkatives. It is, a, it is a system to validate their authority. When you find a king that is a talkative, it means there is a threat to his understanding of power. When they speak, it is by the decree of the king. And the Bible says, where the word of the king is, there is power. I believe in the name of Jesus that in this service tonight, the king will speak over someone's life. Speak over someone's destiny. It was the king that gave the rivers their borders and said, thus far have you come. Do not cross this boundary. And for thousands of years, millions, they have kept in obedience, regardless the rebellion of Satan. When the earth was immersed in water, it was at the decree of the king that the rivers returned back to their place of habitation and gave room for land this king that we serve is a mighty king he is god but he is king our confidence is based on the fact that he stands behind us like a mighty terrible one are we blessed i have come to you tonight oh king of zion give me an encounter go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one whose kingdom there is no end, we worship. Speak to our hearts tonight. Grant us superior wisdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. They go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. When we come week in, week out, we come to encounter strength. We come to encounter the wisdom of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. 
thank you so much for the sacrifice of your time especially for those who have come from far and near i i think i promised last week i hope i'm right on that that we're going to recognize and honor our international guests did we do that already i think we did that did we do that last week anyway all of our international guests may god bless you we thank you for the sacrifice of coming from across the globe the lord bless you we have people coming in literally every week and we recognize and honor your sacrifices one thing for sure is you will not come here and go back the same in the name of jesus christ let me just honor a few people for sake of um, protocol um, we have our very own father bishop obionubogu god bless you god bless you daddy thank you so much hallelujah who would know and believe that 84 years looks like this <laughs> hallelujah we covet that grace that day sorry for the embarrassment but we covet that grace 84 years standing strong tall serving the purposes of the kingdom we honor you sir we honor you hallelujah praise the name of the lord we also have in our midst a dear wonderful man of god reverend chidi okorafo let's honor him god bless you god bless you sir thank you so so much sincerely appreciate you thank you we have reverend yusuf akila thank you so much house on the rock just thank you i have my dear friend and brother pastor fred zamani god bless you thank you so much i love you thank you and our very own Pastor Peter Rock Sadiq, God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everyone who has come, we honor and we recognize you. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Commanding salvation over territories, part two. We're looking at a two-part series that seeks to give us understanding on how to command salvation over territories last the week before last when we considered part one the sub team was the witness of mighty works i did teach us that results are evangelists they also preach that it is not just men that preach mighty works are also witnesses across a territory and that personal results are a mighty tool as far as evangelism and the enthroning of christ is concerned that when believers contend to see results in their lives it is not just for the sake of gratifying the flesh and a sense of progress that god is interested in your producing results because the evidence that comes from and through your life is able to preach to a territory hallelujah that there is a dimension of the gospel that should not be preached by men it should be preached by results results have a voice results have a language that the territory can understand are we together now and that if the church of the lord jesus christ and if believers are barren of results there is a dimension of kingdom advance that cannot happen at a territorial level i told us that it matters that a territory gets saved a territory can be born again not just individuals what happens to the human spirit can happen to a territory every territory has a soul and it can be saved too are we together but that altar call will not be made just by the speakings of men. It is your results that makes that altar call. And that the dexterity of your result can call a territory to its knees to acknowledge Jesus. I told you that individuals can be saved and yet not be safe. Because the safety of the individuals depends on the salvation of the territory. Are we following now? For a long time, the context of our evangelism has been limited to personal salvations. And that is important. 
But if we stop there, it is possible for an individual to be saved and a territory is in decadence. And the saved individual becomes a victim of the decadence of the territory. An example was Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot had honor to the God of the Bible, but because he was dwelling amongst a people who were perverse, it took the intervention of the angels to help him and his family. Is that true? Yes. When Isaiah saw the Lord in chapter 6, he made two confessions. Number one, he said, I am a man of unclean lips. Then number two, I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. So if you are the only one who is saved in your territory, you may be saved as far as your personal salvation is concerned. But the territory, you can be a victim of that territory sadly it is purported that many many nations in africa and the world are corrupt my question is are you corrupt as an individual but you have to answer a corporate name because you are in a territory that has not been saved so territorial salvation matters to god as much as personal salvation can i tell you this when we do not pay attention to the salvation of a territory all it takes is one generation of godly men to pass away and decadence will return and become the order of the day we have seen this in scripture we have seen this through church history that it is possible for satan to be patient and allow a whole generation of those who call upon the name of the lord to be saved when moses was advocating the exodus of god's people from egypt pharaoh began to make negotiations and he said we will allow you but we will keep your children moses said no way we are all going the command is for all of us so just because you are saved does not mean everything is all right if your territory does not answer to god you will have to find out what is happening to the schools where your children go to you will have to find out what happens to you in the hospital you will have to find out what happens to the police and all the institutions within that territory a territory can and should be born again the power and the witness of mighty works it is on account of this that we sincerely desire to produce results results all wise we are motivated by the understanding that our results are preachers so it is not just a manifesto of the flesh a desire to have and to become it is a desire that in and through our results that message of the gospel be preached to the territory are we together now and we looked at a few reasons why individuals do not command the kind of results that can preach to a territory i listed four of them let me do a quick recap and we'll get into tonight's teaching number one i said over dependence on the strength of the flesh you still remember that the reason why we are not able to see the manifested power of god in and through our lives is because there is over dependence on the strength of the flesh technology individuals philosophies and the formula of men number two ignorance and disobedience to god's principles god is a god of systems and ignorance and disobedience to his principles and his systems will always leave the believer defeated my people hosea lamented chapter 4 and verse 6 are destroyed even though they are my people they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge ignorance and disobedience to god's principles number three demonic oppression the third reason why individuals do not command and produce the kinds of results in and through their lives that bring glory to jesus is demonic oppression the bible is very clear as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness in first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 like we considered the week we discussed this that i would have come to you 
Paul was speaking to the church in Thessalonica he said but Satan hindered us Satan does not just hinder men Satan can hinder things he can hinder doors from opening he can hinder helpers from reaching you it is possible and then number four we said the fourth reason why believers do not command results in their lives is that they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment in this kingdom it takes empowerment to rise and to reign ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 it says to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might our strength is derived from the power of his might keep that scripture let's look at amplified it says to draw your strength from your union your oneness with him it says in conclusion be strong in the lord be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides your oneness with christ has a spiritual implication you should be strong in that consciousness are we together the bible clearly tells us that it is through the greatness of his power psalm 66 and verse 3 that the enemies submit themselves there are wicked spirits across territories and it takes the power of the holy spirit to dislodge them and enthrone christ hallelujah commanding salvation over territories part one was the witness of mighty works let's go to part two now commanding salvation over territories part two i want to teach you a very deep mystery tonight please open your spirit your mind if you understand what i want to teach you tonight you will command dominion over territories and i trust god that god will use us in no small way to bring not just individuals but territories to the saving knowledge of jesus commanding salvation over territories part two we're going to be looking at the power of prophetic intercession commanding salvation over territories the power of prophetic intercession jeremiah chapter 27 and verse 18 we'll look at three scriptures or four and then i'll begin to read please read with me it's projected ready read but if they be prophets and if the word of the lord be with them let them now make intercession to the lord of hosts that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem go not to Babylon. If it is true that they are prophets, if it is true that the word of the Lord is with them, then they should make intercession to stop what is left from going to Babylon. The power of prophetic intercession. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that there is the ministry of the intercessor. That intercession is a ministry. And that all believers without reservation are called into that ministry. In as much as there are people who are uniquely graced to be intercessors but that the ministry of intercession like the work of the evangelist who named the name of Christ first Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 to 4 please pay attention I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men reading to verse 4 for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life 
that means the quietness and the peace of that territory does not just depend on what happens in the government house does not just depend on what happens technologically that the saints have an assignment in maintaining peace over their territories in all godliness and honesty verse 3 for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth and all this happens through the ministry of intercession we intercede for all men for kings for nobles for those in authority Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 listen to this and look at it very carefully wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him because of a mystery seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession it is because he makes intercession that we know salvation can reach to the uttermost he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god seeing that there is a ministry that he engages in that does not fail that he makes intercession for them what is intercession intercession is not just mere prayer what is intercession the word intercede means to midwife the word intercede means to become a bridge please pay attention the word intercede means to stand in the gap are we together now yes so intercession gives the idea of mediating over a person over a people so that the counsel of darkness spiritually speaking now does not prevail over their life and so that the purposes of god find expression over their lives to intercede means to stand in the gap in prayer over individuals over families over cities over territories over nations to the intent that number one the purposes and the counsel of darkness be thwarted over those individuals and number two the purposes of christ be enthroned the assignment of intercession seeks to do two things number one to prohibit the hand of satan the plot of darkness over individuals and then it seeks to release the purposes of god to find expression you have to understand this the intercessory ministry has to do with stopping the hand of darkness because i hope you know from scripture that the church being the light of the world is the principal limitation to the reign of darkness is that true yes that the presence of the church is the reason why evil cannot prevail intercession withholding the plot of darkness over individuals over families over nations over territories and allowing the course of the kingdom to find expression many believers do not understand the place of prophetic intercession in birthing the purposes of god over the lives of individuals and territories are we blessed ezekiel chapter 22 let's read from verse 23 please pay attention to this scripture ezekiel 22 from verse 23 and the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man say unto her thou art a land that is not cleansed nor reigned upon in the day of indignation there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof like a roaring lion ravening the prey 
they have devoured souls they have taken the treasure and precious things they have made how many we they have made how many widows in the midst thereof 26 her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things they have put no difference between holy and profane neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my sabbath and i am profaned among them next verse her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey this is a description of the state of a territory to shed blood are you aware of the latest passion you see in our region over human sacrifices does that give you any concern this is what the bible is saying to shed blood and to destroy souls to the intent that they get dishonest gain 28 and her prophets have doubted them an untempered mortar seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saying thus saith the lord when the lord has not spoken 29 the people of the land have used oppression and have exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully next verse and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge that is the spiritual definition of intercession and stand in the gap before me for what the land not just for the people that i should not destroy it but i found the consequence next verse therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own ways i have recompensed upon their heads say yet the lord god can i tell you this tragedy awaits any territory tragedy awaits any family tragedy awaits any people group that ignores the ministry of prophetic intercession i tell you why darkness seems to prevail over territories unhindered because there are christians there are prayer warriors but there are very few intercessors the selfishness of believers that has come as a result of immaturity and lack of spiritual growth has also translated to their prayer lives just because you are praying does not mean you are walking in spiritual accuracy are we blessed there are many examples of intercession in scripture i'll pick three to help us understand that intercession is a powerful ministry number one let's go to the patriarch abraham the bible says look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body so we are looking up to him to study in genesis chapter 18 please give us from verse 16 remember the visitation of the three angels that came to abraham having served them the bible says and the men arose long reading be patient they arose up from tents and looked towards sodom and abraham went with them to bring them on the way uh-huh very quickly please and the lord said shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do seeing that abraham shall surely be a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him for i know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord might bring upon abraham that which he had spoken 20 and the lord said listen carefully now because the cry of sodom and gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it which is come unto me and if not I will know and the men turned their faces from tents and went towards Sodom but Abraham stood yet before the Lord 
And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked? This is the character of an intercessor. Please go to 23. Are you seeing here that whether Sodom is destroyed or not, it was none of his business. But he reached out to say, Look, I, I do not mean to dishonor you, but are you also going to destroy the righteous and the wicked? Next verse. Per adventure, there be 50 righteous within that city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous that are therein? That be, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should not be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Look at, look at, look at, look at him engaging intelligence in intercession. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within that city, what a city. Then I will spare all the place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes. 28. Per adventure, there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Will thou destroy the city for lack of five? And he said, if I find 40 and 5, I will not destroy it. 29. And he spake unto him yet again and said, per adventure, there shall be 40 found there. And he said, I will not do it for 40's sake. Abraham, is it not enough? Watch an intercessor. And he said unto him, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak. Per adventure, there shall 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Per adventure, there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. You are even tired already. You that is reading the story. You see how you are weary and tired. I say, what I Abraham. Are we together? And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. Abraham was safe. Abraham was fine. Listen to the commendation that God said about Abraham. That as far as you and your children are, I know you will teach them right. Yet, Abraham, hold on here. We want to go and visit a territory. And he said, please, I know that it's not my concern. But intercession has made it my concern. Will you destroy the righteous and the wicked? Example number two. Jesus, Jesus the intercessor. Luke chapter 22 from verse 31. Luke 22 from verse 31. Remember the story of Simon and Satan coming into him? And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee i didn't pray for myself that means satan would have prevailed because the spiritual intelligence to immune yourself from his effect you do not yet have it but i bridge that gap in prayer that thy faith fail not and when you are converted use this strategy of intercession to also secure your brethren that while they are still learning the ways of God Satan will not have advantage of them that means when you are converted become an intercessor and the people you train train them to also become intercessors John 17 look at the ministry of intercession verse 1 Jesus 
lifted up his eyes to heaven watch jesus intercede now father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee uh-huh as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him three this is eternal life that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent it says i have glorified thee in the earth i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do five now O father glorify me with thy own self and with the glory that i had with thee from before the world was uh-huh i have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me and they have kept your word verse 7 now they have known all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee verse 8 for i have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they have received them and have known surely that i came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me verse 9 i pray for them i pray for them jesus the intercessor i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine verse 10 it says all and all mine are thine and thine is mine and i am glorified in them watch the prayer of jesus now and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come to thee holy father and it says keep through thy own name those that thou hast given me that they may be one as we are this is why i know the oneness of the body of christ must come to pass because the person who prayed that prayer request was jesus himself regardless the differences you see now there is something called the unity of faith are we together hmm. romans chapter 8 and verse 34 for sake of time we're looking at jesus the intercessor romans 8 34 who we see that condemneth it is christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of god who also makes intercession for us that even after he resurrected after his coronation crowning him lord he still today makes intercession for the saints third example of intercession in scripture the early church acts chapter 12 I hope you know that the condition for anything to be a doctrine there is theologically speaking now anything is a doctrine if and when it was adumbrated in the old testament condition number one it was captured in the life and the experience of jesus number two and it was practiced in the early church number three any truth and any mystery that does not satisfy that threefold condition cannot be called a doctrine it must be adumbrated foreshadowed in the old testament it must be captured in the life the earth work of jesus and it must have been practiced by the early church dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline 